Welcome to the Veranda Financing Podcast. Happy New Year. I'm so happy that you decided to join me today. I trust you had a great holiday season. I'm so looking forward to 2019 and I'm excited about growing the Veranda Financing Podcast and delivering more content to you all. Um, Last year was my first full year, full calendar year of podcasting. And um, as most entrepreneurs and podcasters, you end the year and you kind of look back to see what you can do differently. One thing that I will be doing differently going forward, especially for 2019, I will be podcasting more frequently. So I will be I will be committing to you to have a new podcast each week. Um, that'll be four podcasts a month. So I'm looking forward to actually bringing more content and uh meeting you here at Veranda Financing Podcast, where we could talk about a lot of things, business, entrepreneurship, and interviewing people um, who I find to be very interesting and inspiring for future or existing entrepreneurs. This year, I will also be um, starting my YouTube channel. It's something I was thinking about for a while last year. But it will be going live uh, this month, which that's really exciting. Um, that's, that'll be another way for me to reach new audience. And um, hopefully you were able to do that as well at the end of this year, um, end of last year, was to look at what you will do differently. So I would love to hear what you have to say about that. Um, please share with me um, on Instagram and let me know what your new things or new areas that you'll be concentrating on in your business. Today, I am discussing with you ways you can finance your business with bad credit. I hear so many excuses of reasons why people should not go into business for themselves. And um, I want to give you this episode as a way to pretty much say there's no excuses. I'm not condoning bad credit. I, I think that um, we should all be consistently maintaining a really good credit score or working towards a good credit score. But I don't want that to be a reason why you may not start your side hustle to increase revenue for your household. So today I'm going to discuss ways you can finance your business even with bad credit. And the best case scenario, like I said, is to clear up your credit before you even embark on your entrepreneurial journey. But not everyone has that option. Uh, Some of you may be an entrepreneur because you may find it difficult to get a job and you need to start your business out of necessity. I also understand that you may have started a side hustle to supplement your income and to pay off debt. This episode is for you. This episode is for anyone who's tired of making excuses and saying that, you know what, even bad credit, no credit, I'm still going to do this on the side and start it. So today I'm giving you five ways to start your business with a poor credit score. You might want to grab a pen and paper to take notes because you will always be able to refer to these notes in the future. Before I begin, I just need to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor and that these tips are just for educational purposes. And um, here we go. So five ways to finance your business with bad credit. One, bootstrapping. Many entrepreneurs bootstrap their budding enterprise before they even ask anyone for money. This may involve you just getting scrappy, finding ways to save money from your living expenses to then use those savings to build your business. Um, I here are some five ways you could bootstrap is one, reduce your rent or overhead by getting a roommate or renting a portion of your home out. Two, selling items around the house that you no longer need. Uh, three, selling services in your free time. There are entrepreneurs who have walked dogs in their neighborhood, bookkeeping for small businesses, house it. Or, you know, just take a time to look at skills that you may have that you can sell in your extra free time. Uh, Four, allow customers to purchase your inventory if possible. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, There is someone who has like a event rental business. And what they do is rather than buying all the linens beforehand, they go to bridal expos and different places and they just get samples. And based on their orders, that's what they buy. And that way their customers are paying um, for their inventory up front 
and um, they don't occur as many much expenses. Another, I've also seen entrepreneurs do this with like print on demand t-shirts. They may advertise design concepts. People may pay them for the t-shirt. They use that money to make the t-shirt and they sell the shirt. So they're not coming out with a huge outlay of cash. I understand this might be difficult if you're in other industries where it's it's required um, for you to have your inventory up front, but maybe that might be something you consider um, uh, the type of business you want to get into is a business that customers can um, pay for up front, your inventory up front. Another one way is to raise your prices. This is an easy way to increase your revenue, especially if your customers already see your products or services uh, bring a lot of value to them. Or you might even be undervaluing yourself to get into the market. So this might be a good time to increase your prices because you've, you're proven, you have your customer base, and you're expanding. Uh, another way you can... Um, Fund your business is the second way. The first one was bootstrapping. Secondly is crowdfunding. Some of you may ask, what is crowdfunding? Uh, well, crowdfunding is a practice of funding a project or venture by raising small amounts of money from a large number of people from the internet. So you think Kinks, Kickstarter, uh, GoFundMe, um, you pretty much um, share your story, your business story. Uh, people might, uh, donate $10, $15, $25. There are different increments. And this may be ideal for, um, those of you who have product based businesses. Um, although no one checks your credit score in these, um, platforms, you have to be pretty good with conveying your business story so that people can get very excited about it. A third way to fund your business without a good credit score is merchant cash events. I was a little reluctant to add this to the list because um, they charge very high interest rates and it's not for everybody. And I find that if you have a bad credit score, maybe adding more debt um, to your equation may not be ideal. But I added merchant cash events or MCAs for a reason because these companies, since they lend on future receivables at higher interest rates, um, this may also be ideal for people who are already in business. They might be cash strapped. They might have nowhere else to go for money and um, they need to borrow money to cover a large expense that they weren't expecting. I'll give you an example of a restaurant that perhaps needs to borrow cash to purchase a new walk-in cooler that suddenly um, broke on them during their busy season. Traditional banks may not lend to startup restaurants due to its risk profile, but a merchant cash events company will. Their credit score threshold is low, typically not lower than 500, but their interest rates, again, tend to be much higher. Although these companies may not be ideal when you may need money, this might be an option. Number four, create a cash producing side hustle or job. When you talk to entrepreneurs, you may be surprised to discover that many may have kept their day job while they built their business or even created a side hustle while they're building their business. There should not be any shame, and I repeat, there should not be any shame in keeping your day job to help fund your business and to ensure that you are a financially fit entrepreneur. And I know there's there tends to be this big push, you know, leap and then think about it. And I mean, I, I'm really hesitant to tell anybody to just quit their job if their business isn't proven. There is a learning curve in any business. And isn't it a lot better to do that learning curve while you're getting a paycheck to help you through those, you know, tough times? But again, it's up to you. But um, just my experience, I have kept a day job most of my entrepreneurial journey and I find it to be very helpful. And if you are already working as a full-time entrepreneur, maybe it's time to find another source of income that may provide you with cash more quickly than your primary company. An example of this may be, uh, say for instance, you're a full-time realtor. Your deals may not convert into cash until three or four months. However, guess what? Your bills are coming in every month. When you are just starting out, that may put a strain on your cash flow. Perhaps you might consider teaching an online class as a way to stabilize your income. After all, it's now recommended for entrepreneurs to have 
seven sources of income. That's right. Um, Number five, uh, the last one is friends and family. You might be a little reluctant, but hear me out. This last one is to enlist the help of your friends and family. At this junction, you may have exhausted the previous four steps or just some of them, and you realize you might have a cousin or a sister or friend to borrow or invest to give your company or your organization an extra push. You may see be surprised at their reaction. Another one that just came to me, although it's not in the list, is pitch competitions. Pitch competitions, you do not have to have good credit for the most part, depending on which one. It could be a grant. It could be someone who's investing. But depending on the pitch competition, it might just be like a $10,000 grant for your business. Um, So look into ones that are in your neighborhood, your town, your city um, in the future. So to review, five ways to finance your business with bad credit is to one, Bootstrap by reducing your personal overhead expenses, selling personal items, selling services in your free time, allowing customers to buy your inventory in advance, which is a good way to assess uh, demand and raise your prices. Number two, crowdfunding on Kickstarter, GoFundMe or similar platforms. Uh, Number three, get a merchant cash fence. Again, I'm saying that as an option. Um, Number four, create a cash producing side hustle or job. And five, ask your friends and family. You never know. And a bonus was going into pitch competitions. Thanks for joining me today on the Veranda Financing Podcast. If you haven't been able to yet, please subscribe and rate this podcast. It helps others locate the podcast. Again, remember business dreams come true when you meet, finance, and grow. God bless and have a good one.